Sunday night, I had left my computer on while I played my PlayStation on the same monitor, and when I switched inputs, the computer screen was black. It took me a minute, but I reset the BIOS from the motherboard, and it would boot, but the same thing kept happening until I tweaked settings in the BIOS and got it to stay on through a CPU stress test. It had been overclocked. Around two days ago, I went to turn the computer on, and shortly after booting and logging on, the computer would turn off, and resetting the BIOS no longer worked. I'm not sure if this problem would make a good fix or flop video, but I really need someone to help me with this because his money has been tight. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. Boy, oh boy, is this one a throwback. It's been a while since I've dabbled in an FX platform. This has a 6300 in it, so six cores, although the way that AMD was counting cores back then was a bit dicey. We actually have a video explaining how they did this. If you want to check it out, we'll have it linked below. And 16 gigs of DDR3 are in here, along with a GTX 1050 Ti. We were looking around for storage drives. It looks like he only has a hard disk drive, which it is, it's a bit painful to see because that's gonna mean that his load times and boot times are gonna be a lot longer than they otherwise would be with an SSD. We'll see what else is wrong with this rig. Maybe it's something we could upgrade for him. You'll notice that this case is also quite large, quite old, and it has a, uh, a broken side panel. So this is back when uh, acrylic was a pretty popular side panel choice. You can see it is just scratched like mess and split all the way through. But despite the older hardware in here, this is still a viable 720p and light 1080p gaming machine. It's not e-waste, it shouldn't be scrapped. So there's always a, a comment or two, someone says something like that, absolutely ridiculous notion. Uh, to some folks, this would be an awesome machine. And I wanna make sure that we get this back up and running for them. It sounds like it turns on and then quickly turns back off. That's what I'm expecting to see, and I'm hoping we can fix it. We're gonna try our best here in this one. Are you ready? Stay with me. The new A115 air cooler from Corsair packs two AF140 Elite fans into a dual tower array with six beefy six millimeter heat pipes for powerful heat transfer. Pre-applied XTM70 thermal paste and slim slide and lock fan mounts add to the ergonomics while 90 nickel plated cooling fins and an overhauled retention system ensure excellent cooling efficiency. The A115 supports the latest sockets for both Intel and AMD and ships with Corsair's five year warranty for peace of mind. Learn more by clicking the link below. Now right off the top, I want to call out the fact that this build is actually pretty clean considering its age. Raymond said this is cleaner than his rig, which uh, <laughs> that's pretty impressive for a system that's going on 10, 12 years old or, or so. I'd have to go back and actually figure out how old FX is, but uh, this is surprisingly clean considering. It's not perfect. Obviously, there are some areas of dust that have built up, but I can tell that this owner has taken care of it over the years, and that's one of the reasons why I was willing to take on this project. That said, one of the things I definitely want to fix, even though it's not really pertinent to the functioning of a rig, is the case. That side panel being cracked, it's no bueno, and we're going to replace that with a much newer Be Quiet chassis. Now, one thing that does concern me a bit is the fact that this was manually overclocked. It's not surprising. FX processors have historically been pretty decent overclockers, but it, it does create instability, I'll just say, if, if not done correctly, if not done uh, conservatively, if you're trying to really push the limits of your chip, you'll eventually run into issues. Blue screens of death, random crashes, power off situations like we have here. I'm not sure if they're related, but it's something we should definitely consider. We'll also be sure to isolate this power supply early on the process. I'm not sure how old this unit is. I know that you can still buy similar units today from Thermaltake, but if this one's going on 10 or 12 years old, it should definitely be checked, especially since we're apparently having power on issues. With that, it's now time to attempt to replicate that issue. I'm not sure how far we're gonna get in this uh, power on process, but we definitely need a starting point. Looks like the power button is there. Uh, the power strip is on. I 100% thought it was off because we got no reaction from the system, but it does not appear to want power on at all. Maybe. I don't know, I, I read the, the description. It sounds like it powers on. It just turns off a little later. All right now it's not powering on at all. We can try manually jumping the power pins, we'll bypass any button issues potentially. Let's remove these. Looks like front panel is wired correctly, but again, just uh, giving us a chance to bypass any issues with the case. This is old after all. Interesting, now it powers on without issue. Fans are spinning, things are lighting up. So far, so good, but we've no picture out. And this is not what we were told by the owner, so we need to get in contact with them. The 1050 Ti is slotted correctly and its fan is spinning, so it seems like power is being delivered 
properly. But before we swap this out, which would be a real quick confirmation of whether or not the card is to blame for the no post situation, I want to make sure that his power supply is okay, because I don't want whatever card I put in here to be killed as a result. We've got everything hooked up to our power supply tester now. Let's see if we see any fails. Just power on. And that is not good. We have a voltage fail. Let's see where. Uh, five volt. Five volt issue. That's what it looks like anyway. Interesting. I'm no electrician and electrical circuits was one of my tougher classes in school. But if I recall correctly, power sequencing has to do a little bit with the sequence of the powering on of a power supply. And if it notices that something is getting voltage either too soon or too late, it could throw that code. Again, I'm not sure what that could do to a power supply or any components attached to it, but my rule of thumb is if anything in this thing fails, the unit in question gets tossed out. So we're gonna replace it with something much newer and, uh, well, a bit higher wattage as well. Now Raymond very quickly and astutely, I gotta say I'm really glad he's here because I definitely would have missed this, noticed that the 8-pin EPS connector is actually chipped. Now the board actually only supports a 4-pin for CPS power, but you can see where there's a piece of plastic that's missing. It looks like it might have broken off inside of the connector. And sure enough, in this top left hole, there's a piece of plastic chipped off inside. But if we look even closer, we can actually see burn marks inside these top two holes. And if I was a betting man, I'd say those top two are the 12 volt leads and the bottom two are ground. And sure enough, from the pinout, the top two in yellow are in fact the 12 volt leads. And what I expect happened here is we had some sort of small power surge that partially melted the connector and likely affected the CPU and the motherboard as well. Anytime you have burn marks like this, it's never good for any of the products involved. Now then comes a process of elimination. We need to figure out what else connected to this rig was killed in action. I'm hoping this graphics card is okay, even though it's a weaker unit, it would just suck to have to replace every single component in this rig. On one hand, I would like to replace his components with equal hardware. I could buy something on eBay and just swap it in directly so we don't have to replace the CPU and the RAM at the same time. But motherboards like this one or this one are all selling for like 60 to 80 bucks or more. And I don't think that those prices make a lot of sense for platforms that old. I also happen to have a few extra B550 motherboards that Gigabyte sent us a few months back for fixer flop. I wanna put these to good use. Unfortunately, it does mean we have to, you know, of course, upgrade other things as well. The RAM, the CPU here, this is the 5500, uh, so, these two are going in the rig, I guess. And the case, the hard drive, those are the things we were initially possibly going to tackle. Those are now off the list. We're not gonna be rebuilding an entire system here. I wanna leave something on the table for him to tackle later. The power supply is going to be scrapped. The case is gonna remain the same. And the hard disk drive is going to remain the same. I really wanted to upgrade the case. It's not gonna happen at this point. And of course, I hope that his graphics card still works. We've got that connected now to the new platform. All of these components are known working, although I haven't tested them together before. We're just gonna power on here. All right, fan spinning on the card. That's nothing new. We're really looking for a picture out. Give us something. You see, okay, there's no glare there. Come on, uh, anything? There we go. All right. His card looks fine. If it had been killed by the power supply, I highly doubt we would have gotten any picture through it. So we're going to keep this in the rig. He's going to have the upgraded platform and we're just going to stick with a stock cooler here. Nothing special. He had the stock cooler, what it looks like, stock cooler on his FX 6300. Um, this one's a bit better. I'm okay with this going on a 5500. And we're going to throw it into his original case along with a new power supply because there's no chance that that thing is touching any of this working stuff. So, out she comes. Let me have to do a quick physical inspection of this once we have it out. Platform is next. We'll also scrutinize this a bit later. Ooh, we got some tangled cables. Tightening the new board down. Front panel is going in. And now it's time for that new power supply courtesy of, you probably didn't see this one coming, 
be quiet. This will most certainly be overkill for his current setup, but we have a straight power 12 850 watt unit from Be Quiet that we're gonna be throwing into this rig. Now, this is gonna provide him plenty of power headroom, obviously for the future, but it's also gonna give him peace of mind now with a great warranty, fully modular setup. This is a beautiful design. It's also super efficient. This is an 80 plus platinum unit, something he could take with him to the next system in the future if he decides to upgrade, uh, or if he just wants to sell it. I don't know, he could do whatever he wants with it, but this definitely is warranted. There's no way, like I said, that that original power supply is going back in. Ooh la la. Look at this beauty. Also comes equipped with a super, super quiet fan. So even when this thing is spinning, you probably won't notice. And we only have to connect the cables we need. Gently slide her in to sit something like, this. oh, come on now. Something like that. Right there. Is it all the way in? Yep, we're good to go. Once again, I want to thank Be Quiet for being a continued product sponsor of our Fixer Flop playlist. You can learn more about the Straight Power 12 by clicking the sponsor link below. I'm gonna shove these extra unused cables below his hard drive just so he has them in case he wants to expand things later. And now I believe the last component to tackle is this graphics card. Remember, with this, we don't have supplemental power. You're just hoping then that what we've done works now that Everything's back together. Now, we didn't address the hard disk drive. I did confirm that it was receiving power. You could just barely touch it and feel the vibrating uh, uh, disks, the platters inside. So I think that's okay. That's really the only thing we've recycled apart from the case at this point. So we've got power at the rear. We're gonna click the power button up front. Interesting how the power button works now. It didn't work in the old motherboard. I, I think it was, in hindsight, more of a motherboard issue than it was a case one. And look at there, right away. Boot straight up, and I believe it should load into Windows once we reset the TPM. Now while we're waiting for Windows to update, we can see that the underside of this FX6300 looks pretty clean. There was a bit of excess thermal paste, but nothing that was hindering pin contact. Of course, there are no bent or missing pins either. And the socket looks pretty good. No issues here. I don't expect we had any, any contact issues with the CPU. Uh, the entire board, for that matter, actually looks really good except for the four pin up top. I don't see any burn marks anywhere else, no dislodged or corroded components. It is just strange that this four pin is the way that it is. This is the first very serious burn that I've seen on a motherboard in this playlist, if I recall correctly. It's possible that this might have had something to do with the manual overclock that the platform is experiencing. Maybe the owner overvolted it too much. There was too much current being sent down these two wires and it cooked things. Kind of hard to tell at this point. I just know that what we're seeing is no good. In fact, it was so bad that it partially melted the connector inside of the four pin header. This is wild stuff. I'm just glad that this thing is out of the system for good. And as for the power supply, I cracked it open for you guys to see. Uh, well, it's pretty dirty. There's a lot of dust here. It looks fine though. Other than that, I mean, I could start probing around in here. It's a bit unsafe though. I'm not super confident in my ability to work around some of this stuff if we haven't discharged the capacitors correctly. Uh, stuff in here can kill you. I don't normally like showing power supplies cracked open like this to begin with. So uh, nothing obvious, nothing burned here. Just wanted to get that point across. It's not always going to be something that you can see with your eye but uh, I am glad that this is also out of his system for good. A great result then for a system that practically limped into the office. It was toast, it was cooked, and we didn't see that right away. We uh, were under the impression based on the description that it was still able to load into Windows. We didn't see that. In fact, uh, it refused to post, it barely powered on, and we're lucky that it didn't take the graphics card with it. We do have two other components that we haven't tested yet. The reason why I haven't is because I don't have at my disposal a DDR3 platform, let alone an FX platform where I can swap this in to confirm that it either works or doesn't. Uh, for now though, these components here obviously are known working. We load into Windows. It's not the end result I was hoping for, but the important thing is the system now works and that is our job at the end of the day. Yes, I'd like to make this rig look prettier. I'd like to make this rig run a little faster with an upgraded storage drive, but other things got in the way. And in my opinion, those are more important. And that's what we've taken care of. 
here. Now, if you have a broken system and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and you'd like a chance to have it fixed for free, in this playlist, be sure to check out the link near the top of this video description. It's gonna send you to a form where you can let us know of your PC's issues, and we'll do our best to get to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching this one. Check out our troubleshooting info in the video description. Looks like it just timed out because we've been sitting here for about 10 minutes off camera. It's totally normal. Uh, and uh, just completely lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, check out links below. Is that what I was talking about? Yeah, links below. Uh, all of our troubleshooting gears down there, cleaning gear. Of course, some of the components that we've thrown into this as well, if you're interested. And uh, stick around for the next one. Consider subscribing, liking the video, commenting down below. You guys know the spiel. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks for learning with me.